1.7 million. That's the number of people with a lower leg amputation today. How many of those people currently use a prosthetic device? A mere one-tenth. Despite the significant technological advancements in robotics, computing, and mechanical interfacing over the last couple of decades, why is it that nearly 90% of amputees today aren't wearing a prosthetic leg and able to walk around? In fact, the rejection rate of prostheses hasn't declined significantly in the last 25 years. What have we missed in the field of prosthetic development? If we take a look at the progression of prostheses, we see quite some advancement. Back in the 1800s, we had a simple wooden leg that could bear the weight of a patient. Today, we have sophisticated power devices. Some even reduce the energy cost for walking. Now, turning to the amputation paradigm, we see from a Civil War textbook that a surgeon would basically make a cut at the site of amputation, cut through the muscles, through the bone, basically wrap whatever was left inside the skin. Frankly, a pretty crude procedure. And what do we see in the current day? Well, basically the exact same thing. Ladies and gentlemen, in nearly 200 years, the amputation paradigm hasn't significantly changed. We're trying to use an outdated surgery to interface the human body with some of the most advanced machines available. Now, the current surgery leaves many pain points. Firstly, it cuts nerves and leaves them basically dangling that then become inflamed and turn into painful neuromas, making it hard to wear a socket. It also takes the muscles and disorderly wraps them, making it difficult to derive robust control signals to drive a prosthesis. But perhaps most importantly, the current surgical paradigm destroys the capability for proprioception or sensory feedback. Go ahead and close your eyes for a minute. Take your right arm, stretch it out, and with your left index finger, touch your right palm. Open your eyes. Now, this is something that you can do with ease, without any practice, because your brain is being constantly informed where your arms are in space, how they're moving. This sensory feedback is called proprioception. And it's something that amputees cannot receive from their prosthetic or phantom limbs. How does the body accomplish this? Basically, when you move your joints, your muscles are working in agonist-antagonist pairs. So when one contracts, the other stretches. Say you're planting your foot. Your calf muscle contracts, and the muscle on the front of your leg stretches. And a nerve from that muscle tells your brain where your foot is in space and how it's moving. But in the current amputation paradigm, these muscle pairs are disrupted, meaning that when one muscle contracts, the other doesn't stretch. So these nerves aren't able to communicate anything to your brain, and you have no idea where your foot is in space. Imagine going through your day not knowing where an entire limb was. Imagine having to look at your hand each time you wanted to pick up something. Even with the most advanced devices today, most people feel that the prosthesis isn't a part of themselves, and understandably so. The brain's just not hearing what the body is saying. Now, apart from being a researcher at MIT, I'm also a classical dancer, and I've had the good fortune of dancing alongside an amazing artist and a close friend, Sutikshna. Sutikshna uses a right leg prosthesis. Now, dancing is all about feeling, feeling the energy flow through your body, feeling the blood gush down your arteries, feeling your limbs traverse space, feeling your toes hit the floor as you land a jump. This feeling, body awareness through sensation, is an integral part of dancing. In addition, your central nervous system is receiving constant feedback information that allows you to stabilize your joints, move with dexterity, and know how movements are going to land. Say you're taking a pose on one foot, for example. Based on the neural information from those muscles, your body automatically stabilizes your ankle. But for my friend, with current devices, her body has no direct feedback mechanism to establish balance. Instead, her body and brain have mapped alternative methods to be able to move smoothly through movements. 
but it's not as if her prosthetic leg is neurally integrated to be able to allow her body to automatically adjust. What if we could re-engineer systems to provide natural proprioception, direct sensory feedback? At the biomechatronics lab, we went straight to the root of the problem, to reconceive the amputation surgery. We take a nerve that would normally be cut during amputation and left dangling, and we place it into a new home, a muscle graft. And after it grows back in, we're able to read strong, isolated signals to drive a prosthesis. These muscle grafts also prevent painful neuromas from forming. We then take these muscle grafts and connect them in agonist-antagonist pairs so that when one contracts, the other stretches. We call this the agonist-antagonist myoneural interface, or the AMI. In my initial testing in animals and testing in humans, we find that the AMI is able to effectively communicate with prosthetic devices but more importantly, convey back to the brain information about where that prosthetic leg is and how it's moving. By reconceiving the amputation surgery, we're enabling a method that will allow my friend to directly feel her leg, a method that will allow her body to automatically establish balance. We're creating the capacity for a greater sense of embodiment, the capacity to seamlessly integrate the human body and brain to machines. We find broken systems all around us, in the workplace, in society, in government, in our own homes, in our personal habits. Some of these have been unchanged for years, overly complex from the small tweaks made over time to treat the symptoms. Sometimes, to really address a problem, you have to uproot the tree. Engineers and researchers for decades entrenched in electronic and digital strategies have been trying to recreate sensory perception using those techniques. Instead, we turn to nature, which has literally spent millions of years engineering the human body. Each muscle, for example, has these specialized fibers called spindles that can track minute length changes and send them to the brain on a sub-millisecond resolution. Our nerves are communicating using over a thousand channels the fact that you've moved a finger. The best electrodes we have in comparison use on the order of tens of channels. Instead of going the electronic route, we leverage nature to be able to reconstitute the physiological signaling paradigm. Of course, having to uproot an entire system comes with great discomfort and uncertainty. Convincing surgeons, prosthetists, amputees, physical therapists, insurers, an entire industry of people to embrace a new approach this will certainly take time and tremendous effort. But for the reward of allowing a previously infertile tree to finally bear nutritious fruit, I think it's certainly worth it. I believe that in the future, each person should have the ability to communicate with their environments in a way that feels almost natural. That each amputee will find it comfortable to wear a prosthesis that they can claim to be a part of themselves. We're redefining the way in which we recreate the sense of feeling for millions of people. The next time you're working on a stagnant problem, ask yourself if you're really addressing the root cause or just treating some symptoms. Think boldly, act courageously, and uproot the necessary trees to make a meaningful and lasting impact. Thank you.